in our last session we had discussed about budgeting i hope you have understood basic concepts we had also dealt with three cases on budgeting today we will know a little more on budgeting especially on special techniques like zero based budgeting we will also do a case on flexible budget and once that is over we will proceed for our discussion on next technique that is known as standard costing now let us do a brief review now what is a budget i hope you have heard this term in the context of government as well as in in the context of private companies so budget is a statement which is prepared in advance it's a quantitative or financial statement it states the policy decisions of the management in case of government finance minister presents the budget government tries to tell what it plans to do in the next financial year what will be the taxes to be collected what are the rates of tax what are the new schemes announced for welfare all this is communicated through union budget in case of private companies every department or for the whole company an estimate is prepared and all the attempt is made to see to it that the cost is kept to that estimate or the targets as set are achieved so budget has two utilities one while you set the budget you become clear about the objectives you coordinate all your resources in such a way that resources are channelized properly once the budget is set it acts as a target it acts as a benchmark so that you have proper direction for going ahead okay now with this brief introduction we will see the next techniques on budget uh, all these things i think we have discussed till we will glance through in the meantime i hope you can recollect what we are discussing we had seen that budgetary control this is a technique that is primarily used for analysis of uh, for setting up of budgets and then for comparison and for analysis of variances so the objective is that the corrective actions can be taken as fast as possible so the objectives of budget include planning directing and controlling there are several advantages to the budget because due to budget the activities are conducted in a coordinated manner there are proper yardsticks there is a objective evaluation of performance any deviations are noted fast so that one can take a prompt and timely corrective action and budget also acts as a basis for creation of next year's budget then we had seen various types of budget they include physical budgets like budget for sales budget for production budget for manpower requirement so these are represented in terms of quantity then there are cost budgets physical budgets as as a base using the physical budgets we try to estimate the cost let us say based on production budget we will try to arrive at the manufacturing cost budget based on the manpower requirement budget you can make a human resource cost or personnel cost budget and so on then there are profit budgets so in profit budgets the cost budgets as a base revenue is estimated and revenue and cost when compared we get profit budget so budgeted pnl account will be an example of a profit budget then budgets can be divided into various types we have fixed versus flexible budget we have master versus functional budgets long term short term and current budgets all these we have discussed in our last session so i am just going ahead now today we will discuss one very interesting concept in budgeting that is known as zero base budgeting now normally what happens is any budget which is prepared is prepared on the basis of last year's budget so if we have to give budget for say department x we say that okay last year this department had spent 15 lakhs there is a inflation of about 10% so let us this year may fix the budget at 16 lakhs or 16.5 lakhs so last year budget is usually carried forward 
some changes are made and this year's budget is prepared this is the traditional practice of making budgets zero based budget is a concept which challenges this practice that is why it is said that this is a budgeting from scratch so instead of making budget based on the last year here an attempt is made where the assumption is that there was no budget in the last year last year's budget was zero so let us say for that department or for that program last year budget was zero this year a fresh allocation is to be made of resources so if we feel that 16 lakhs need to be allocated we have to make a proper account and then justify why 16 lakh is allocated then that is called as a zero based budget so this is a method of budgeting which requires each cost element to be properly justified so justification cannot be the fact that last year something was spent so automatically you will spend this year every year that activity has to justify why so much of resources needs to be allocated first of all why this activity is required so all activities programs departments have to justify themselves and then only they get the allocation of resources that is a advantage of or that is a feature of zero based budgeting. Now what are the advantages? ZBB it is a systematic approach for evaluation of different activities. So just because some activity existed in the last year it need not be automatically continued. The activity will be evaluated whenever ZBB exercise is done then all activities will be ranked as per the preference and then the allocation of resources are made. So the less important activities will be weeded out, they will be stopped and more resources will be available to critical or important activities. It ensures that every activity which is critical gets enough resources. Now there is an opportunity for having a proper cost benefit analysis and wasteful expenses are properly identified and eliminated. Though this zero based budget is such a good kind of uh, exercise or a technique, it is not so easily acceptable because several times wasted interests oppose it. Sometimes employees may oppose, sometimes senior executives may oppose. So there is some opposition to zero based budgeting. Secondly, it is a time consuming exercise. In case of traditional budget, budget making takes lesser time in zero based budgeting all activities will have to give justification then those activities are ranked then preference is decided then the new budget is prepared so relatively it is time consuming. So it becomes very difficult to do ZBB exercise every year but it is very much useful if this exercise is done at least once in two years or three years. Now let us look at an example of a functional budget. Now uh, we have to calculate raw material required to be purchased. What is given is budgeted sales are 5000 units. The stock of finished goods in hand is 500. Material A and B are required in the quantity of 12 and 10 to make one unit of finished good. Opening stock of raw material is 500 for A and 3500 for B and closing stock of 1000 is required to be maintained. Now given this data we are required to calculate the raw material to be purchased. Now just think over how will you proceed. I will show you the data once again. So you can see that some data is given about finished goods, some data is given about raw material A and B. Before going for raw material A and B, we have to first look at how much raw material is required. The starting point is budgeted sales for finished goods. From budgeted sales of finished goods, we should calculate first the production budget. That is the production which is required to be done. So to sell 5000 units, first let us calculate how much we need to produce. Then to produce that much how much material is required that is known as material consumption budget and then looking at the stocks of raw material we will try to calculate how much raw material needs to be purchased 
Okay. So, there are three stages actually we have to we are asked to calculate raw material purchase budget, but before that we have to first do production budget using production budget we will do raw material consumption budget using raw material consumption budget we will try to calculate the purchase of raw material budget. Now, let us see how it is done. Okay, so, now budgeted sales as was given is 5000, it is desired that we must maintain closing stock of 1000. So, total requirement of finished goods is 6000, 5 plus 1 and we already have opening stock of 500. So, 6000 minus 500 units to be produced are 5500. Now, this 5500 is known as production budget. Now, we know how much units are required. Now, let us look at how much raw material is required. So, we have two raw materials A and B. We know that 12 units of A are required to make one finish output. So, for 5500 units, 5500 into 12 that is 66,000 units of A are required and in the same manner 5500 into 10. So, 55,000 units of B are required. This is called as a consumption budget for raw material. Now, using this consumption requirement, we will try to calculate. Now, from this we reduce the opening stock of raw material which is 5000 and 3500. So, total requirement comes down to 61000 and 51500. Okay. Now, it is not given that whether we have to maintain finished good stock of raw material. So, let us assume that we have just in time inventory or we, we do not have any system of maintaining the stock. So, we will purchase as much as we require that is 61,000 and 51,500. Is it okay? So, what we saw right now is an example of a functional budget. This was the budget for purchase of raw material. Like that, the budgets are made for each activity or each department. And then those budgets are ultimately coordinated into or compiled into a master budget. Last time we have discussed this functional budget and master budget. Let us do one more case. So, have a look at this case. Now, a company attends sale of rupees 7 lakhs at 70 percent of its normal capacity. The expenses are given wherein office salaries are 1 lakh, general expenses is 75,000 plus 5 percent of sales, depreciation is 9,000, rent and rates are 8350. These are admin costs, then look at the selling costs, they include delivery boy salaries which are 6 percent of sales, traveling is at 2 percent of sales, sale office expenses are 90,000 plus 3 percent of sales, general expenses are 1,30,000. Now, using this, we have to draw flexible administration and selling cost budget at operating activity of 80 percent, 90 percent and 100 percent of normal capacity. Okay. I hope you remember what is a flexible budget. In the last session, we have discussed that there are two types. One is a fixed budget, the other is flexible. In fixed budget, what happens? A particular level of activity is estimated. Let us say in this case, it is 70 percent. So, the budget is prepared only for 70 percent expecting that the level of activity will be maintained at 70. But what happens is the real life is not so fixed because you may have lesser demand, you may also have more demand. So, we need to be flexible, we need to be adaptive. That is why many times instead of making a fixed budget, a flexible budget is prepared such that if the activity is at 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 and so on, we are able to have a budget for each level of activity. So, in flexible budget, instead of just doing at 70, we do at various levels. Now, in this problem, we have been asked to make apart from 70, budget for 80, 90 and 100. Now, think over how it can be done. Just give a thought. I think most of you would be guessing it right. We have to first segregate our cost into fixed and variable because fixed costs do not change with level of activity. So, when, whether it is fixed budget or flexible budget, they are going to remain at the same level. Then we will look at variable costs. 
because they change with level of activity we will have to create a formula or a structure wherein we know them as a percentage to sales so as sales changes they will also be estimated at each of these levels okay now let us look at how it is made so in the first step please make enough columns i'll request you to solve with me so that you really understand how it is done so calculation of flexible budget make a sheet the way i have made particulars then take various levels that is 70 80 90 and 100 so they estimated 70 perhaps they would have expected that actual level of activity may be more that is why 80 90 100 is made if you want you can also make 60 okay so you can make at various levels let us see now how it is made now it was given in the problem that at 70 percent the sales are 7 lakhs okay so that becomes the base using that we estimate the sales at 80 percent 90 percent and 100 percent so now of course it's very simple 70 7 lakhs so 80 percent is 8 lakhs but we have included the formula so that it's clear to you so we have 70 7 lakhs into 70 upon uh, upon 70 into 80 so we get 8 lakhs 9 lakhs and 10 lakhs that is sales now look at the expenses the first expense admin cost is office salaries 1 lakh office salaries as you can see is fixed it doesn't change so here while estimating we have said office salaries 1 lakh anyway it will remain same at all the levels fine so there is no change general expenses will go up general expenses it was said that it is 75,000 plus 5 percent of sales so we have included the formula to take care of this so it is sales into 5 percent plus 75,000 which is fixed so you can see that at 70 80 90 and 100 we have got 110 115 120 and 125 in other words since it is at 5 percent of sales at each of these levels it is increasing by 5000 because sale increases by 1 lakh so 5 percent of 1 lakh it increases by 5000 it's clear okay now the third expense is depreciation fourth is rent both are fixed so we can directly write them here depreciation is 9 at all the levels rent and rates are 8350 at all the levels then we make a sum so we come to know how much are the admin costs you can see the admin costs have 227 350 and they have increased at each level gradually because many of them are fixed some portion is variable now on the same lines try to make for selling costs i'll just go back to the problem okay so details are given to you variable expense include delivery boy salaries you can see it's six percent of sales so you can directly estimate it as a percentage of sales just try doing it this will be on the same line as we did for admin costs so first expense we have taken is delivery boy salaries it is simply six percent of the sale value so in each column it is taken as six percent of right now it is b26 and so on right next is traveling cost traveling cost was estimated at 2 percent of sales so on the same line it is estimated sale office expenses this is semi variable so 90,000 is fixed plus 3 percent of sales so now the formula is fit accordingly it is b26 into 3 percent plus 90,000 and the same has been carried over so you can see it is 1 lakh 11,000 then 114, 117 and 120 so it increases by 3,000 for every increase of 1 lakh of sales correct general expenses were fixed 1 lakh 30,000 so they are carried all over then a total or a sum is calculated for selling expenses so now you have a budget for both admin as well as selling then the total is calculated which is a total of admin plus selling we also have estimate of revenue so we have estimate of revenue and the estimate of cost you can see that 
the total cost is rising as the level of activity is rising slowly the profit is also increasing because the sales increase at a linear level by a linear proportion while some of the costs are fixed so costs do not increase in the same proportion you can see the profit which was 175650 has also increased gradually and at 100% level it is as high as 427650 so it's a huge increase in profit which you can see is it clear so here was an ex example of flexible budget this is also known as profit planning because based on the different level of sales here you are able to estimate different levels of profits which are achieved at each of the levels is it clear so with this we will stop with budgets what we have discussed is we have seen what is a budget what is budgetary control we have also seen types of budgets like fixed flexible uh, then we have functional versus master or long term versus short term and so on then we have done a few cases those cases just to remind you included the calculation of a flexible budget like say production budget then we had also done direct labor cost budget we had also seen raw material consumption budget and today we have seen calculation of a flexible budget okay so we have seen uh, cases of different types we have also seen a special budgeting technique which is known as zero based budgeting as you must be remembering it is budgeting from the scratch wherein all activities have to justify their existence every time the budget exercise is done so overall budget is a very very useful technique it is used by business organizations as well as by government it acts as a very good control technique wherein the cost can be controlled the targets are achieved and the corrective action is taken timely it also serves as a tool for planning because better planning is done through budgeting and it also serves as a tool for coordinating and communicating that's it's a very very useful managerial tool and i hope uh, with this discussion you have understood it please read some more books so that you have more understanding or a detailed study of it and it can be used in day to day life in the government not only in government and business even in your family okay uh, now let us go to the next technique now the next technique which we are going to discuss is also a very interesting technique that is known as standard costing i am taking it immediately because there is a linkage between budget and standard costing budgets as act as a benchmark or a target in the same manner standards also act as a benchmark or a target and standard costing is also used as a control technique let us discuss it in detail so here in this module we are going to discuss standard costing and variance analysis we will also do a few cases on the same what we are going to cover here is definition of the standard steps in standard costing types of standard variance types of variances variance analysis and the advantages and disadvantages of standard costing and also in between we will be dealing with various cases now let us look at what the standard is now if you are say going out on a tour and you call up your friend and you ask him that please tell me some of the standard hotels in that particular city so what do you mean there by standard you say you tell me the standard hotels so what do you mean by standard so here what we mean is a good hotel a good hotel where you can stay without any problem where you get a reasonable good service but not a luxury if you want to go for a very top quality hotel perhaps you will ask for a luxury hotel so by standard we mean reasonably good and at a affordable at a low cost okay standard also means certain quality level which is required which is the minimum 
नेसेसरी रिक्वायरमेंट इनकेस ऑफ एग्जाम्स ऑल्सो वी यूज द टर्म स्टैंडर्ड वी से दैट द मिनिमम पासिंग स्टैंडर्ड इज थर्टी फाइव परसेंट और फोर्टी परसेंट इन सम केसेस सो वॉट डज इट मीन वाई फोर्टी परसेंट दैट मीन स्टूडेंट शुड स्कोर एटलीस्ट फोर्टी परसेंट सो दैट ही कैन बी डिक्लेयर्ड टू बी क्वालिफाइड इन दैट एग्जाम सो दैट इज अ मिनिमम लेवल ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग मिनिमम लेवल ऑफ अचीवमेंट इन द एग्जाम so they, that is also called as a standard so in general now what do you mean by standard what do you understand by standard okay so it's a norm or a benchmark it is used for comparison and it indicates minimum quality okay now the same thing we are using we are going to use as a mechanism for cost control okay so with the understanding of standard we will go into discussion of what is a standard cost as the name suggests it is an estimated cost or sometimes it's a pre, or it's a predetermined cost of performing some operation or producing some goods so if i am making a pen i may say that the standard cost of pen is 6 rupees i am selling it for 10 rupees so whenever i make the pen in normal course i estimate that it is produced at 6 rupees sometimes for a particular operation let us say there is a refinery so they will say that for refining operation the standard cost is so and so per liter of petrol or if you are operating a car you may say that to drive on in city roads where there is reasonable level of congestion you estimate that so much petrol will be consumed so these are all estimates of standard cost this is used as a comparison with the actuals so you will first state the standard and then that standard will be used for actual now this standard which is chosen to serve as a benchmark is used in the standard costing or in the budgetary control system it is a budget for production of one unit we have already discussed the budgeting so in budgeting exercise what you get as a budget can be used sometimes as a standard standard costing and budgetary control go hand in hand budgets are used as a input for standard and those estimates again can be used sometimes as a standard keep in mind that standard is a predetermined cost and it is calculated from management's desire or management's view on efficient operation for and also on the relevant market conditions now let us try to understand what is standard costing now this is a cost accounting technique which is mainly used for cost control so here the standard costs are determined and then they are compared with the actual cost so that you can initiate a corrective action that is a main purpose of standard costing that you can compare know that something is going wrong and without waiting too long you can go for a corrective action that is how you can control your costs now this is a control method which involves preparation of detailed cost and sales budgets because those budgets are going to be used as a standard now the management tool which is used to, uh, to facilitate management by exception i hope you know this concept of management by exception so if you have let us say 1000 cost items and you have from your accounting system 1000 costs management cannot look at all the costs or it may not serve much control just by reading the whole cost statement so what will be done is you will have the standard for all the 1000 you will compare the actuals with the standard and wherever there is a deviation suppose the actual costs have exceeded the standard management will just look at those items because something is going wrong something needs correction this is use of management by exception so instead of looking at everything you focus your attention on something which is going wrong which requires your action sometimes it could be a positive variance so actual cost is less than the standard still management may be interested to know whether the standard was wrong whether the efficiency has really increased are some good practices being used and should those practices also be standardized 
so that they can be used repeatedly so whenever something deviates from the norm from that benchmark or from the standard the attention of the management is attracted to it that is achieved by standard costing so instead of wasting time on all the details managerial time is used on what is really essential and important now there are certain steps in standard costing which you can show in this chart it starts with setting up of standard costs so lot of studies are done samples are taken good methods wrong methods they are all studied and a desirable method of doing work is found out and that is set as a standard then the actuals are calculated so you will record the actuals and standard is compared with the actual to get what is known as variance analysis so you calculate the deviations or the variances then look for the causes why this deviation has happened and try to take corrective action this is all covered in variance analysis so essentially these are three important step setting the standard recording the actual and then analyzing the variances now the first step setting of standard now in this again there are two sub steps one is to know the standard quantity the second is to arrive at a standard cost or the standard price per unit now in calculating the standard quantity we will look at what is a efficient methodology how much units of material or time are required to do some work if the work is done really efficiently so that a standard quantity is calculated at the same time looking at the market conditions our relationship with suppliers we try to find out at what price a particular raw material can be purchased or how much rate is to be paid to workers and so on so both the quantity and price is determined and using that the standard cost can be set and it is recorded with proper details so that they can be compared the third and very important step is variance analysis in variance analysis first of course the variance is calculated by comparing actual with the budgeted cost or actual with the standard cost now the cost variance is used for controlling as we have discussed it acts as management by exception so we know where the attention is to be focused where we are going away from the standard wherever we are going away from the standard suitable corrective action can be taken then the responsibility can be fixed so we will not just say that the material cost has increased we will see whether the quantity has exceeded if yes then are there any production inefficiencies whether the losses have increased or if it is not the quantity if the prices have increased then we will see whether the market conditions were wrong or whether purchase department is at fault whether they have purchased at higher prices so at one side corrective action is taken and along with that responsibility is fixed to ensure that there is a compliance with the standard deviations are not repeated next is create proper control system so once the responsibilities are fixed we know that manager should check what how the control will be maintained and there has to be a proper system so that no deviation is tolerated and if it happens it is corrected very fast next is resetting the budget if necessary so if there is a deviation and that deviation is because of change in the market condition or change in the technology and so on then we will reset the budget or the standard as the case may be now let us look at the types of standard one standard is known as ideal standard this represents the level of performance attainable when the prices for material and labor are in the most favorable that is why it's called as a ideal standard it is difficult to achieve 
but this is something like achieving 90 percent or 100 percent of marks. So, uh, this serves as a long term goal if management really wants to enhance their standards, then you can have normal standards. So, these are something which are achieved in the normal course of operation. So, how many hours if there is a normal efficiency, how many units are consumed if machines operate in normally good manner that is a normal standard. Then you can have very basic or boogie standards. So, these are used only when something is likely to remain constant or unaltered. So, here the base year is chosen and that base year figures are calculated for subsequent years if required only the price indices are used to adjust those figures. When basic standards are used, then we do not look at variances as standard minus actual, but the actual cost is expressed as a percentage of basic cost. So, basic cost is used as a standard and then the actuals are compared with that. We can also have current standards. These standards reflect the management's anticipation of what actual cost will be for the current period. So, we look at the current market trends and based on that a current standard is produced. Now, let us look at what is meant by the variance. As the name suggests, it is a difference, it is a deviation between standard and actual and it may be favorable or unfavorable. So, when we are discussing with the standards, we know that uh, we are talking of costs. So, if actual cost is more than the standard, then it is not favorable. So, we estimate that the cost is should be 10 rupees that is our standard, but actual is 12. So, it is unfavorable, but when the estimated cost or standard cost was 10, actual is let us say 9, we have saved 1 rupee. So, it is favorable. So, we can have favorable as well as unfavorable variances. Now, just to calculate that figure of favorable and unfavorable is not enough. We would like to know the causes. So, we will look at why there is a difference of 1 rupee. Is it because of quantity or price? Has any accident happened? Is the raw material of low quality or whether the market trends have changed and so on. So, we look at their origin, then we look at cause, so that the remedial action can be taken to eliminate the variances. Now, according to causes, you can have various types of variances, but one basic time is controllable and uncontrollable. Usually, what can be controlled at the level of that departmental head is called as a controllable cost. Okay, so, that you can hold the person responsible and what is beyond the control of the departmental head, maybe it is under the control of the management or it is because of market trends, it is because of some unfortunate unknown happenings, all this will be uncontrollable. So, to help better fixing of responsibilities, out of the variances, we look at what is controllable so that the responsibility can be fixed on the departmental head. What is not controllable, we will try to look at who is responsible or whether the standard itself needs to be changed. Now, variance analysis means that the total cost variance is divided into components because we are trying to identify the causes. So, we try to look how much is because of quantity, how much is because of prices, how much is because of accidents and so on. So, the total cost variance is divided into components and we would like to take the corrective measures according to the to that part of variances. Now, the broad components, the first could be variance of efficiency. Now, the variance which arises due to effectiveness in use of material quantities or labor hours is called as are called as variances of efficiency. So, here we look at the quantity which should have been consumed and quantity which has been actually consumed, so that we can compare the efficiency. The second is variances of price rates. So, 
we look at what was estimated budgeted or standard prices for material and what is the actual price then that is a variance of price same way it can be done for labor rates electricity rates and so on the third is variances due to volume what happens is when the level of activity changes a uh, fixed cost remains same they do not change so naturally that also causes some variance because if you are absorbing the cost as per unit basis when the number of units increase you absorb more cost if number of units decrease you absorb less cost that also causes the variance that is called as variances due to volume so broadly these three can be the causes efficiency rates and volume now going by the elements the variances can be calculated as material variances labor variances overhead variances and sales variances we would look at the cases of each of them i hope you know these items now material labor overheads and sales so variances will be broadly divided on this and within that within material we will divide them on efficiency price and so on okay now let us look more in detail at material variances now why are the material variances cost one is could be changes in the basic price fail to purchase the material the standard quantity at appropriate prices so if you do not time your purchase well the market price might have changed then on quantity side if substandard material is purchased the consumption increases the losses increase so that can be a cause sometimes ineffective use is done sometimes there is a pilferage so the last three that is substandard material ineffective use and pilferage are basically the quantity related issues changes in the prices or changes in the anticipated standard quantities become the price causes now let us look at how to actually calculate the variances the total variance that is material cost variance is a difference between the total estimated or the standard price versus the actual price so it is a standard quantity into standard price minus actual quantity into actual price now this total cost variance we would like to divide into the price related causes and usage related causes now on price related so as the name suggests we compare the prices we compare the standard price with the actual price and that difference is multiplied by the quantity which is purchased that is the actual quantity so material price variance is actual quantity into standard price minus actual price the second part of the cost variance is usage or the quantity related variance so in material usage variance we essentially compare standard quantity with the actual quantity on the units basis and then it is multiplied by standard price per unit we will do cases so that it is more clear to you before going to labor variances let us try to look at a very simple case on materials that will i think throw a better light on what we are discussing so now the case says that calculate material price variance from the following figures to produce product p 200 units following material is consumed as per the standard it is 2000 and the price is 40 actual quantity is 2200 and the price at actuals is 37 this rarely happens that actual price is less than the standard but in this case it has happened so standard price was 40 actual price is less than that 37 so you have saved 3 rupees but if you look at quantities Uh, you should have consumed 2000 you have actually consumed 2200 so there is more consumption there is more cost now using this data please try to calculate the material cost related variances how will you calculate just think over i'll just push down the solution okay so now the first step will be to make a table in this table we are comparing standard and actual material costs so you can see quantity into rate is amount so for standard it is 2000 quantity at a rate of 40 
so we ought to have spent 80000 to make 200 units actually we have used 2200 units of raw material at 37 rupees so we have consumed uh, we have incurred a cost of 81400 so you can see instead of spending 80000 you have ended up spending little more 81400 so this difference 80 versus 81400 1400 is a variance this is a material cost variance now is it favorable or is it unfavorable we must have spent 80 we have spent 81400 is it favorable it is unfavorable definitely it is not good it is unfavorable so it will be marked as an unfavorable variance you can look at the formula now so material cost variance is standard quantity into standard price minus actual quantity into actual price right so 80000 into 81400 we have already done that multiplication so it is 1400 adverse or it can be called as minus 1400 okay now we know that okay something went wrong so the cost increased by 1400 but we would like to know the detailed causes either it could be because of quantity or it could be because of price now how to break it up so can you now tell me that we have spent 1400 more is fine but how much as of it is because of more units consumed and how much was saved because of saving in the price so first let us look at price part of it which is known as material price variance the formula is actual quantity into bracket standard price minus actual price so within the bracket let us compare the prices 40 minus 37 so 3 rupees per unit are saved they are saved on the actual quantity of 2200 so 2200 into 3 6600 it's a plus positive figure plus 6600 it's a favorable variance we have not spent more we have saved so the price variance is 6600 favorable now how much is a quantity variance we know that quantity consumed has exceeded by 200 units that's a quantity variance let us look at the formula so material usage variance it is standard price into bracket standard quantity minus actual quantity so it is 2000 minus 2200 in bracket multiplied by 40 which is the standard rate we will not use the actual rate which is 37 we must have purchased this uh, at 40 so we will multiply it by 40 you can see that the variance is minus 8000 or you can call it as 8000 adverse so this minus 8000 plus 6600 is a breakup of minus 1400 which is a material cost variance so we will stop here in today's session initially we discussed about budget what the budget is what is budgetary control we have also discussed about zero based budget then we have started with an interesting technique which is known as standard costing in standard costing we are going to set the standards then record the actuals compare the actual with standard which is known as variance and then analyze why the variance happens we have also looked at the types of standards and now we are doing a case on actual analysis of variances so we were looking at why the material cost has increased the reasons are either price related or quantity related and then we are breaking down the cost variance into its causes so that the corrective action is taken this is a very good technique which is mainly used for cost control. Thank you so much. In the next session, we will do a little more discussion on standard costing and we will also try to solve more cases on standard costing. Thank you.